Hi Thumos. Today we have to talk about a deception that goes so deep, that is so far entrenched, that even me speaking about it will turn many people away, will shut ears, and will make me seem crazy. There's a lot of so-called egotistical intellectuals that are on the internet these days. They get off on appearing smart, on using fancy words, on quoting philosophy, quotes, intellectual stuff, all of that. We even have a lot of people that uh, we follow that seem to be intellectuals. It's, it's part of the ego's way to appear superior in the modern day. And what I want you guys to know is that you have to enter this with an open mind. The deception is so deep. What has happened is we have many men that are becoming very weak because they are godless. And when I say godless, I mean that they have never had the apprenticeship, the training. They have never had their mind tuned to something greater than just themselves. And when we're only focused on ourselves, what happens is that we fall to our base nature. We fall to lust. We have hunger in our eyes of lust. We fall to drugs. We degenerate. We have entropy. We go backwards. We are not helpful. We become weak. We become depressed. If the men become weak, society crumbles. Okay? The original hero's journey, as Joseph Campbell laid it out in the hero's monolith, looks like this. A young boy sets out on a journey. Or he, answer, he has a call to adventure. He refuses the call right here. He answers the call right here. Somewhere along here, he's supposed to meet his mentor. He's supposed to meet an apprenticeship, have an apprenticeship that trains him to handle the rest of this journey, to become stronger, to become wiser, to be equipped with the right tools to handle this journey. Nowadays, there is no apprenticeship. The apprenticeship that we get is high school, perhaps we go to uni after that, and uni these days is filled with a bunch of weed, drugs, drinking, and partying. That's our apprenticeship. Learning a, a skill or some being taught something that is not really that valuable. Men these days are left alone. More than ever, we do not have tribes of men that come together and fellowship and lift each other up and sharpen each other. And our men have become very unstable. You can see it everywhere. If you just look on the forums, if you just look on the internet, if you look in the comments, it's all there. We have fall, fallen to our base nature. The original apprenticeship was supposed to be a system of beliefs that guided us and had guiding principles on how to live your life. If you ever heard of the RAS, it's the Reticular Activation System. It helps you filter out all of the data in the world. It helps you focus on the right things. On the things that you tune your brain to, your RAS picks up on. If you ever uh, think of pineapples, put pineapples in your head, you probably see a lot of pineapples out these days. The car that you have, if you drive a Toyota, you probably see Toyotas more than any other car. The RAS has activated, it's telling your brain what to look for and what to pay attention to. These days, our RAS is focused on the wrong thing. And thought dictates the quality of your life, okay? Thought dictates the quality of your life. If you have the wrong thoughts, then you will be focused on the wrong thing. Religion gets made fun of these days. Because on both sides of the spectrum, people seem to be too extreme. Religion is too extreme. It's, it, it's this bubble. And here you have this group of people that believe a certain thing. And anyone that's outside of this bubble is not allowed to be in there. They look crazy. These people seem crazy. They're too religious. What I've noticed is this is based off of fear. Fear that you're going to the wrong place. Fear that, it, you know, if you don't be a good boy, if you don't repent all your sins, then you're going to hell. Okay? It's based on a lot of rules. It's based on a lot of tradition, man-made stuff, all of that. And it's, it's less about the quality of life 
it's more about the fear of where you're going after this life. Now, that, you know, what we have here is outside, these people think the religious people are all nuts. Very easy to do so. Many religious people actually, you know, or once, once they hit about 20, 21, they take their belief, they kind of leave the circle of influence. And they look at the new religious people as nuts. They look at the religion as nuts. They become atheists, anti-theists that think, oh man, I was so deceived. Now I can finally live free. I can finally have a drink. I can finally have sex. I don't got to worry about death. It's very liberating if you were brought up in the religious circle as a Christian, Muslim, whatever, Jewish. Once you leave the circle, it's very liberating for a bit. But especially if you were born into this culture of fellowship with other people, church, regular visitings of church on Sundays, uh, the curriculum, the, uh, the apprenticeship that the book, the Bible, the Quran, the Talmud, whatever it gave you, once you leave that for a while, you sort of start to realize, well, now you're your own God. Now out here you have to come up with your own philosophy. And a lot of times we attach to all of this, this other stuff. Like we try, to, we try to create our own philosophy, we read philosophy, we try to get a grip on things. You see? You have to understand that the deception is so great that any mention of God, any mention of religion is automatically shooed and shunned away. We're repulsed by it. Okay? We know that many people have died because of religion. Listen, the goal was never to be a hardcore theist that believed in the book word for word and uh, was, was shutting out everyone else. That's not what the books are about, man. They're not supposed to be based on fear. If you live your life in fear, then you're doing it wrong. God has not given us a spirit of fear. The whole goal of these texts was to give you a way to live, simple ways to conduct yourself in a world. And if you don't have those, I guarantee you that you will fall to your base nature. And we're seeing it more than ever. We see it in the men. We see it in the women. We see it in the household, in the society. People are unhappy. Why is that? America, the great, in God we trust. That means in, on God, on a higher power, we keep our eyes on to guide us. And we conduct ourselves with our minds in God's mind. And when I say God, I mean on a higher way of living. On a living that keeps, that keeps the peace. On a living that, that uh, wants the best. On a, on a way of living that guy conducts the individual, okay? Our RAS, the reticular activating system, was originally, originally, before we knew it was even the RAS, it was originally tuned through prayer. Prayer was the way to guide your mind. You would pray throughout the day. Some Muslims, they pray throughout the day. When you arise in the morning, give thanks, say a prayer. We would pray before we eat. Christians, we pray in the morning. We pray at church when two or more are gathered in my name. Anything is possible. We're supposed to be in prayer because it tunes your mind to the things that are worth thinking of that keep you on a higher plane, on a higher frequency, higher vibration. You understand when you fall to your base nature, when you have no apprenticeship, when you have no guiding force, you're left on your own with your own philosophy. You become your own God. There's no one to bring you up. You look for motivation on YouTube. You look for inspirational quotes that sound good on Instagram and Facebook. Then you start doing weird stuff. You try to like put your own stuff out in the world and, and criticize and you get angry and you feel like you, the world is like, what is the point of all this? There's a very nihilistic route that you can go down. There's also a very bitter route, an angry one. There's a, a drug addict route that you can go down to. When you don't have your mind tuned to God, then you realize that you're left to your own devices and you fall short. Okay, that's when you fall into sin. And sin is death. Sin is hell. Hell here on earth. Many people are living in hell. you got to understand. Okay? We've fallen because we have nothing to keep our minds on. We don't have our eyes on God. We don't put our trust in God. We don't have a God that can unify the kingdom. A God that we can all say, aha, 
I see, I see what the story is about. I see where it leads us. It leads us to better times, to prosperity, to peace. But on the flip side, we have people that take it word for word, way too serious. They don't, they're not as smart to see that this is not what it's about. It's not a fear-based thing. And then the people that think they're so smart are not as smart either. They've convinced themselves that it sort of gives them identity being an atheist, uh, renouncing all theistic, uh, all belief. So as a man, you fall to the base nature. And it's very hard because now the world reaffirms all of this. It keeps feeding you. It keeps now, now it's tuning you. There's no more prayer. There's no more easily digestible, easily digestible scripture for a man to ingrain into his mind, to take in through the conscious, to ingrain it into his subconscious. That way it's always there. It's a guiding force in his life. And you can see this in most men these days. There's a godlessness inside of their eyes. There's a, there's a hopelessness inside of their eyes. Their, their belief has been torn apart. It's been, they've been so deceived. They have nothing to grab onto, nothing to believe. And so they're, they're sort of always grasping for things. They're always trying to, to get this and, and, and f- fulfill this desire and, and through sex, through drugs, through everything that we can think of. And the shows and the media constantly fill our lives with fear. And they tune our RAS to think about things that are beneath, to below, to keep us in this hell. Walking away, renouncing the, the Bible. And I'm speaking as a, as a man that was raised as a Christian here in the U.S. that was built on Christianity. Renouncing that has proven to be a decline in what I'm seeing. And you have to understand. You have to try to understand and wrap your head around the deception. Okay? There is so much power in, say you read the New Testament, in the scripture there that provides hope for your life. Not hope that you're going to go to heaven one day. That's No, heaven can be here on earth. Okay? To live a good life. The spiritual techniques... The way it programs your mind to think about things we're thinking of. To keep your mind on a bigger thing. It's like almost like stoic. It's being stoic philosophy, but it it provides a a better, more memorable story with easily digestible scriptures that can stick in here. Okay? It's it it probably has been around for so long because it stood the test of time, because it actually worked. And then somewhere along the line. We started to say, hey, well, there's some people taking this stuff way too seriously. Maybe it's not that serious. They look like Looney Tunes, okay? They look loony to me. Um, I, I'm following all these rules and laws. That's not what it's about. It's not to follow the law, to follow the law. It's following a certain set of principles so that you live the best life possible, so the, that you you negate suffering, okay? So that you... Do not fall to your base nature and degenerate. More than ever, self-help is huge. We've got all these books out here, The Subtle Art of Not Giving Enough. You are a badass. It's like everyone's looking for the answer. But it was there for us. The Bible provided in the West a solid foundation to conduct ourselves, to live as a, a unit, as a nation. Okay, and now we have so much chaos because people are now godless. They lack the apprenticeship. We have no more of the training. We're on our own. And left to your own, left to your own, you are uh, a piece of nature that uh, has a bunch of desires and is easily influenced by its surroundings. You're easily influenced by whatever someone, them, wants you to know. They're easily, you're easily susceptible to becoming more of a consumer, more of a gossiper, an angry person. An angry person cannot be trusted. 
Everything is programming you. You have to understand the mind, plastic, it constantly changes. And that mind, if it's not set on things that are higher, on a higher frequency and vibration, then you will be, you will be fooled by uh, the world that is out here. Okay, the world out here, it's tricky, man. Be aware of the deception. That's all I'm saying. And understand that I'm trying to figure this out too. I'm not telling you how to live. But I'm saying that I have found some of the best, the most powerful techniques. And they're super simple too. Super simple. But your life will drastically change. Dramatically change. You'll have more hope and peace and happiness and lack of worry. You'll have a peace that surpasses all of your understanding. When you don't have that, you're left to always be thinking, always being here. That's not what the brain is for. It's not supposed to always be on. Okay? It's not supposed to be there. When you develop a relationship with the Most High, and when I say that, a lot, a lot of you have a cartoon image of a big guy with a beard and a cane. That's not what I'm talking about. It's a, that's how deep you've been entrenched with the illusion that this is all foolish. It's in the cartoons. It's in the shows. Okay, It's everywhere. So be aware of that. People are really into DMT these days. And it's weird because everyone sees a lot of similarities. And it says that that can cure depression. And that can cure your anxiety. Well, if you can tune your it, religion, the text, I should say, because we're not religious. What we are is we understand these texts and the guiding principles, the story that helps us manage and live our life. DMT these days, many people see the same thing and it shows them things that are inconceivable. Things that we don't know. They're all struck. They're inspired. Because it helps put your mind on the universe, on the unknown. Guys, we're just a little pale blue dot, like Carl Sagan said. Okay? In the middle of this abyss, this ocean of darkness. We do not know what there is. There's planets here, there's stars there, what the heck is it all? There's atoms that do crazy things. When you don't look at them, life is going on. It's just nuts. We don't know what this is. If you can keep your mind on the bigger picture that you don't know what this is if you can actually maybe develop a relationship with it the mind is always in the mind of God you have a, a mind of God God's mind then that will change your life you will leave this petty worries that circumvent the earth that leave you feeling all types of miserable okay and and angst and depression and, and all of the stuff that you feel here put your mind on God Develop a relationship with that greater power, with the force. And there is a presence inside of that silence. There's an immense power, a power that comes out of presence that you actually feel. And these days we're not present. We're on the phones. We're here, we're there, we're everywhere. There is a power that emits from the presence that you will feel, you'll be infected with it, you'll be overwhelmed by it but it will guide your life. It'll show you what to do. That presence you can always return to. Step into my presence, it says in the Bible. Okay? You don't have a spirit of fear, but a power. Come to that presence, man. Get to know God. Get to read the scripture. Learn some scripture. You want an antidote for all the chaos and all the miserableness that you're suffering with? Read some of the New Testament. Read some of the scripture. Remember them. Let it ingrain it into your unconscious mind or your subconscious mind. Change your whole life. All right, some things to be aware of. Let's let's be uh, let's be aware. Okay, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.